everyone. Good morning, everybody. Uh, look who's with me. Actually, you, you might not know. You might not know. But every time that on the shows I reference Lisa Chandler, this is the lady. Good morning. Good morning. Well, afternoon, actually, Natasha. Well, yeah, you're evening. You I'm that had to get up early. You had to get up early for me. So mm -hmm. thank you. Oh, no, absolute, absolute pleasure. Um, so, Lisa, when we do these interviews, there's generally lots of goodies on the website, www.natashamakes.com, so that everybody can go and look at your fabrics there. But when I've done these interviews in the past, it's been with the likes of Kay from Brandon and Philip Jacobs and people like that. You're in good company. Good company. No pressure. Yeah, no, 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 no pressure. But... <laughs> Often people already know quite a bit about them. Right. But the beauty here is that not that many people in the UK until now might have heard of you. So we can kind of start from the very beginning, which is a. And we can make it up. Name. No, no, you don't get to make it up because, you know. <laughs> That's going to be real. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can if you like we can't fact check <laughs> you've just got to remember that's what they say isn't it liars are going to have good memories so <laughs> yeah but, no, but you're right um, it's it's lovely because um so often you know I'm trying to get a different angle or something like that but actually for this it's it's really beautiful for me because I can go right Lisa from the very beginning you didn't start out in textiles did you no not as not as a profession so I started sewing early it skipped a generation it was it was that classic my grandmother taught me to sew story yeah, yeah, yeah. And Same. I was wheeling and dealing, selling um, felt mice and pomanders from about the age of 12. Nice. But <laughs> somewhere in the middle there, I fell in love with food and science. So I did a double degree in food science and technology and um, worked for some fantastic companies like Kraft Foods, um, spent a lot of time in the UK for work as well for a company based in, in uh, Mould near Chester. So I had, you know, that was about 12 years of my career. So it was dairy, working with McDonald's, lots of different companies. Um, but like with a lot of people, when you decide to have children. Ah, life changes, right? Uh, <laughs> your hobby can kind of become your, <laughs> your hobby becomes your profession. So um, when I uh, I kept working after I had Phil, he's now 23, and then I had Steve. Two boys. Yeah, two boys. So um, it's somewhere in the middle there. I started teaching for stress relief. <laughs> <laughs> How's that going for you now? <laughs> stress, <laughs> for stress release and relaxation and colour color therapy, um, started working in a little patchwork shop and then uh, I remember just before I had Steve, we were making uh, pinned up Christmas trees and I was trying to get around the students, you know, with the with the baby tummy and all that sort of stuff. And then they wanted to see me with the baby afterwards. So they sort of followed me home. Um, <laughs> like Pied Piper of quilters. <laughs> yeah, and sort of arrived with pies and casseroles and saying, here, we'll hold the baby and do the washing and then you can show us what you're working on. And that's literally what happened. Wow. So I started teaching from home then when Stephen was about 14 weeks old. Um, and he's now a strapping six foot two 19-year-old. So that's, that's where it started. And then the whole, we had a shop in our house and it was getting completely out of control. So we moved out into a shop. Nothing was ever planned, Natasha. Nothing. No, 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 never is. Nothing's Best ever things planned. Never are. No, but hey, what, what I found as I went was my passion and my inspiration was cultural influence. So architecture, textiles, which is sort of a bit like CAFE as well, but, you know, that yeah. whole um, looking at patterns and mosaic tiles, looking at Japanese kimonos, all of that. So when we went out into a shop, I said, right, I'm not just going to have a bit of everything. <laughs> I want a trip around the world for my quilters. So I wanted everything to have a cultural influence. And there was a lot of beautiful Japanese designs just coming onto the market. But 
What I didn't bet on was the girls walked in the door and went, well, where's the Australian designs? And there wasn't, there wasn't anything um, that was really relevant. So we found this little gap. But that's the short story. The long story is I couldn't draw. <laughs> I didn't know anything about textile design. Well, you also went so, to work with Robert Kaufman, didn't you? I did, I did. So I learned how to draw. And because I had, I was the biggest seller of Robert Kaufman in Australia, in 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 metallics, in oriental prints and everything. So I had, I started was to get an understanding of, sorry? Was that through your shop that you had? Yeah. Oh wow! Yes. So the shop that grew out of your out of your house became it grew into a it grew into a sh- an out shop three blocks from the house. So, <laughs> um, so I started to study the way they do collections, and you would know this. You'd have a border print, and then you'd have a big panel, and then a small one. So I started to get an an idea of the formula that they used, and um, had a great friend teach me how to draw. And uh, when the Robert Kaufman International Sales Director came to Australia on his annual trip, he flew from Sydney down to Melbourne to meet me to go, what, who is this girl and why is she selling, you know, all this, all this stuff? So he came and met me and I sneakily just showed him what I'd been working on. Um, and he said, you need to show people. So that's, that's what happened. But I didn't send it in. I sat on it for another year. And then my husband, Rob, got sick of me and he said, just book a ticket. Just just go. <laughs> so I booked a ticket to America for a five-minute meeting in Pittsburgh. Amazing. Amazing. And, and it was just the right place at the right time, but we gave them an imperial look. So that meant they appealed to everyone. And which design was that? Which did you go so with? So that's under the Australian sun. So that's, that's the botanical range. So the botanical got. range you spent two years learning to draw botanically correct flowers you so you don't you never do anything by halves it's not well you know well, a quick sketch here looks a bit like it that's okay nah but you have to, the pressure was on Natasha because my parents were pretty much Australian plant greenies hippies <laughs> in the 70s <laughs> And um, I spent my childhood giving out free plants to people in housing estates to replant the natural indigenous plants that had all been dug up when they built their houses. So I grew up again, you know, amongst pedigree experts in Australian plants. So, I, you know, I couldn't, I had to do it correct. I mean, Melbourne's so you different. Are- actually a botanical artist. You see, because this is it. Philip Jacobs told me off for calling him a botanical artist he's like i'm not a botanical artist natasha i'm a fabric uh, a fabric designer um but for me like his florals are so beautiful i'm like how can anybody draw florals like that and not consider themselves a, a botanical artist but now speaking to you i realize it's because his aren't necessarily botanically correct whereas yours are and you get yours checked by a botanist i love this <laughs> Botanist I've known since I was five years old, yes. Um, and But then also when you're designing them, I work from several sources. So I'll work with um, botanical, uh, botanical drawings and paintings either from the Arboreum archives here in Melbourne or um, just, you know, from, from records of the first, the first botanist like banks that came through with Captain Cook and stuff there's a lot of material that's available to look at historically how they were represented and then through to modern day you know correct so if you mix that up with and then I'll go and take a heap of photos at the Australian Botanic Gardens to get the layout and the positioning that I want so you kind of merge you merge a few different things together to um to get them to work it's phenomenal. I mean, the you've got one. You've got one in the square just above your head. It looks like you're wearing a botanical crown, which is beautiful. Oh yeah, this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, gorgeous. And I've got one here. And the here we go. Look at that. Oh yeah, beautiful. Snap. Oh, I have a small person at the door, <laughs> Freddie. If that's you, I'm on a work call, darling. Oh. Yeah, you're up super early. <laughs> Can you go and play with kittens or watch TV or something, please? 
The kittens can go in the sitting room with you, yes. <laughs> now go. <laughs> run, 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 run. The joy of the electronic babysitter. I thought we'll get this yeah. done early on a Sunday morning so the kids will be asleep. Uh -uh. <laughs> Oh, bear with me a minute. Freddie, yes, they can. You just have to shut the door. Hopefully we will edit this bit out. Edit one. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? The joy, right? The joy from home living. But do you know what? I do feel a lot better about it since I saw like the one of the BBC news anchors um, end up with a, you know, a child wanting a snack. In <laughs> that went viral. That was fantastic. <laughs> So that's life now, right? That is life. Uh, that's it. Yeah. Can I have the kittens? Can I have a snack? Can I do this? Yes. Yes. Uh, sorry. Where were we? So botanically correct and all rather beautiful um, in gorgeous colorways. And so did Robert Kaufman then, um, did he then print your designs for you and take you on as a designer within his house? How did that work? Yeah, so um, so Robert Kaufman, I don't think they've got, I don't know how many they've still got now, but we, you're a licensed designer. Right. So so you submit, so as time went on, I did about eight collections with them. So you you submit the collection, well, you, you run it by the design director first. Then you take the risk of spending three to four months kind of, throwing out the design and the collection and sending it in um hoping that they're going to like it and that they'll run with it so I was I was really lucky we we had a good run so um and then the way that it works is is well as a, as a licensed designer you get paid per yard printed so that's that's the way it works but you don't have you don't have complete control ah. over everything Right. So sometimes <laughs> we're going to fight the battles here, aren't we? Because <laughs> you need, you know, where I'm going. You yeah. need to win the war. So the first collection through, they decided to do a third colorway compared to what I had wanted, and put it onto chocolate brown with pink, and it did not, it did not sell in Australia, but it sold well elsewhere so so I sort of just had to as long as I got what I wanted then you ran with these other ones but then there was um the first the first lot through that came through with my gum leaves my little gum nuts and you know what they look like now they came back kind of as red holly berries because oh they decided that they didn't look that good and oh. um they'd be better in red and I'm like oh. no and then we got uh, flannel flowers in blue. Gum nuts. Yeah, so those little gum nuts on there came back kind of as red berries. Oh, interesting. No, don't so think so. mechanically correct. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and these, okay, so this is, these, I've got his, these here to kind of kit to do something for you. But um, these, are, these are called flannel flowers because they feel like flannel. Oh, so wow. that is their actual size. They're, they're quite big. They're at least two inches across and they feel beautiful. They're like velvety soft and they're, they're a precious thing because they've got to have just the right conditions um, in Southern Australia to grow. So this is like our Edelweiss, if you like. It's our pure white flower that, that we love and mix in with you know, other bouquets. And they came back and said, oh, we think it's quite boring. We're going to print it in blue. And I said, no, can't mess with the flowers. Purple? No. <laughs> so, you know, we had, we had fun. I actually had the, one of the, one of the Kaufmans ring me about this, this problem. And it was, okay, okay, Ken, I don't know how to describe to you how important it is and how symbolic Australian flowers are to Australians because we're not particularly attached to our flag. We've got a red, you know, red, white and blue flag as our national flag and then we have green and yellow for the Olympics and then we've got all different things going on. Um, but I don't mess with the flowers. And he said, well, I need a really good example. 
and I said, okay, I find the American flag boring, so I'm going to print it in purple, orange, and green. And there was just dead air. And I thought, <laughs> what have I done? What have I done? And he Look, said, get it. <laughs> okay, I've got it. The flowers stay white. And I said, thank you. <laughs> so... But look, it was, it was a, I shouldn't say, it was a fantastic journey with them and I learned so, so much and it's such an amazing relationship to work so closely with people on the other side of the world for me. You know, it's a really personal, intimate thing to hand over your artwork yeah. and ha- have other people handle it through to the factory. You know, yeah. There's an immense amount of um, trust and understanding required. So, so that with your botanicals, there's a lot of beautiful um, gold and silver work through them. Mm. Has that been on it from day one? Yeah. And was that at yeah. your insistence? It was, yes, it was at my insistence at the start because for me to be able to give them a range that would have a worldwide appeal, not just to Australia, because we're talking about printing. I mean, you've got to print 3,000 metres of each design. So if I, you know, it's it's a big, big run. So it couldn't, at that stage, we didn't know what was going to happen. We couldn't just bring all that to Australia. They couldn't risk it for that. It had to appeal worldwide. So I gave it a really imperial look so that it would, you know, to someone overseas that didn't know they were Australian, it would sit next to Japanese chrysanthemums or orchids or... Um, flowering eucalyptus gum looks like cherry blossom sort of thing. So, so to me, it, it had to have the the metallic on it for it yeah. to do that, and and it did. I mean, it went into Spain and Russia and all over the place. So, you so you are. I mean, you are a, a worldwide artist, but for some reason, we haven't had a lot of it in the UK until now. No. And this no. this is my absolute joy and pleasure to be able to bring it to the UK Um, and there is a richness and a lusciousness I for those that don't know the story um, our friend John said you two should meet and you know when in a a very in his normal pushy way yeah, 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 and then yeah. Set up a meeting immediately to to make that happen, and um, and I'm always cautious when someone says you will yeah. love such and such, <laughs> but he was right. Yeah, don't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he did do that. And we're like, don't tell us girls what you think, what 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 we want. We know <laughs> what we want. You can't tell us what we want. And I think within the first ten minutes. I don't think we really heard a peep out of John, which is unusual. No, he didn't laugh, didn't he? He just left the meeting. Yeah, just yeah, left. yeah. And we just carried on chatting. But when he first showed me your fabrics, I w- walked around for the next week with the biggest smile on my face going, they're amazing, they're amazing. I was showing them, e- everyone that works with me, I'm like, look at this, it's phenomenal. Look at this, it's not in the UK. Can you believe it? It's phenomenal, it's so beautiful. And I've had the same reaction. So when we first met, And when I first bought your fabrics, I hadn't felt it. I hadn't actually. No, you hadn't. I'd only only seen it on a screen. Um, And I I ordered a lot from you thinking, I think I trust this woman because (laughs) she's, (laughs) yeah, you may well giggle now. Uh, (laughs) Because she's a perfectionist. Like everything that you do, you absolutely do it spot on I'm like I can work with this woman I can really work Uh, you know I admire you I I love your designs and I love your ethic and I just think yeah absolutely spot on thanks Nat you take up three of my evenings a week now too (laughs) I can't believe so Lisa for those of you who don't know Lisa makes her family these big strapping boys in her life (laughs) she makes them sit down and watch Natasha makes with all of you guys (laughs) of an evening well, it's not me, it's them. Um, yeah, because Steve's here on a Tuesday night, right? So you air at, uh, I think it's 7 p.m. our time. So he's here for dinner on a Tuesday night. So um, even today, I saw him today and he goes, right, so I'll be home for dinner tonight and then like dinner and Natasha on Tuesday night. Like it's just a thing now. <laughs> to sit. But it's such a novelty for us to see. Like you've got that quilt behind you on the wall. And it's just so weird to see it 
well, not weird, but it's it's such a novelty to see it hanging there. It's very funny. It's it's just beautiful. When we had a show a few weeks ago and your fabrics and your samples arrived mid-show, <laughs> I had to stop everything to open it. And um, my mum said to me afterwards, she messaged me, she said, you looked like you used to when you woke up on Christmas morning. Aww. Your stocking was at the end of your bed. She said, that was the look on your face. She said, I know that you truly love these fabrics. I'm like, yeah, no, I truly love these fabrics. They're just phenomenal. Aww. So, well, that- for every, yeah, but for everything that you like about them, it's probably about eight hours of tears and just heartache <laughs> for me getting them right. For which we are very grateful. Because <laughs> I'm not trained. It takes me, it still takes me longer. So when we get down to final colouring, the the fabric agent team that I work with, um, so 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 you understand there's like a there's a triangle. So there's a fabric agent company and they're based um in LA and they are just the experts at interpreting artwork finding and communicating between I mean obviously I don't speak fluent Japanese so you need a go between they they are magical people and um, again a long-term relationship so it goes to them and then it goes then it goes into the factory so um, it's just yeah it it's a very it's a very privileged thing it's a privileged thing to do um, but it just takes a lot yeah because uh, you know the 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 years that you spent with Robert Kaufman have basically acted as an apprenticeship for you in in many ways and now you're out doing it for yourself yeah true doing it for yourself the first the first time we did a run through and I was out on my own you know we got about four steps of the process down the way and I got really cocky and went I don't know what they did because you know it it just I know what I'm doing oh no get to step steps five six seven and eight oh I went oh this is what they used to do and then I hit this massive learning curve but it still takes me twice as long to take 16 color screens and go right increase that one 20 percent drop that one 15 percent take that one more yellow like it that part of the process is just Tough. Wow. wow. And does and that get happen, it wrong? Does that happen a with lot. the colour agent or does that happen with the does that have does that happen with both? That yeah, that happens that happens with the fabric agent. Um because they're fluent and in the so, uh, yeah, and then they they give all of that instruction to the factory um as needed. I mean the main gentleman at the factory does speak English, but there's a language that's spoken in fabric converting that I still don't I still don't have it you know the first time it was like okay we're going to do a 45 degree repeat double drop and I'm going I don't know what we're talking about so there is still that um that language component there this negotiation sometimes as well because I'm not very good at fitting all my colors into 15 screens plus metallic so I um I cause problems really yeah, and then like a like a kung fu movie sometimes the gentleman in Japan will go, ah, oh, we may need to impl- implement the 16th screen. 16th screen. It's like this mythical extra screen because Lisa's created headaches and <laughs> we have to put another screen in. So which is not supposed to be there. But you know we airbrush now too. So yeah. That, no, um, I was trying to explain this the other day to everyone because with fabrics unless they are digitally printed which is the likes of um tim holtz and people like that they will digitally print yeah it's a lot more expensive though isn't it to do whereas yeah it has become really expensive to digitally print and uh, one of the reasons for that is the base cloth has to be different right so the actual cloth that they digitally print on to avoid um bleeding through and things it's very different. So uh, Jason in the beginning, you know, those guys, they've all, they've all perfected that. And that some of them, that's all they do now is digital. It's very hard to kind of plan, plan your ranges back and forth. I kind of feel that once people commit to digital printing, they don't go back to screen. And it's a very different okay. development 
um, process as well. Um, but yeah, the to get that gradual color is uh, is 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 harder to do um, with screen printing like I do than digital. But now we're airbrushing. Yeah, so which, there are only a couple of factories in Japan that yeah. do this airbrushing and you've lucked out you've found I say lucked out through hard work and determination <laughs> and, and detective work yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> uh dear stalker hat and, and uh magnifying <laughs> glass at the ready um you have tracked down one of only two factories in Japan where this can be done so just expect you have um each screen gives a wash of another color yeah but in between what are you now doing well what i believe happens because <laughs> until i can get to japan to actually like it's almost it's almost rude for me to ask japan, japan directly because it's such a big thing so i kind of get little snippets and i'm learning from what my fabric agent team tells me we can and can't do how it works but so we've got 16 screens and the 16th is the metallic. So the metallic goes down last. And that's really important because uh, people say, why do you put that down last? Surely you put the outline down first so that it's easier to see what they call the registration, which is making sure all the different layers um, line, line up, up mm -hmm. together. But you've got to put the, the metallic gold, I'm digressing now, but you've got to put the metallic gold down last if you print over the metallic gold it actually changes the the color of the metallic gold um is that and why it throws me sometimes sorry is that why yours sparkles and some other people's don't i'm not i'm not sure but definitely it's got to go on last if you uh, we've just done this new color that you're getting before me in the eucalyptus flowers in the, in the aqua um <laughs> I don't even know how that happened, but anyway. I don't know. Um, so very what, pleased about it. <laughs> what, what happens with that when it's just a short run to do as a sample, um, sometimes they have to just, they just throw down the gold and put the colours over the top. But it throws me every time because when you put the blue over the top of the gold, it comes up copper. Uh -huh. It changes the colour of the gold. And I have to, you know, I have to get my brain in the right frame that I don't look at the copper and just the blue um, but what happens is now they they screen print and with the same color they can airbrush over the top so you lay down one color and then there's the follow-through airbrush over it I believe so if you've got this solid color then you can gradually fan it out um, with or shade it out with an airbrush over it so you just get um, you get I'm just thinking if I've got hang on I think Oh yeah, this one is. You just get these amazing, you can get really amazing effects on them. They're on, they're on the butterflies, Natasha, and then they maybe look next time crazy. when we show the girls the um those big oriental fans. Yeah, they do look through. But you just get this beautiful oh, no. gradual, is it the blue? Yeah. So when the when the girls get these home, they'll be able to see it sort of, it's not a distinct um screen print there is a shading to it that's been done with airbrush i just think they're amazing i really do they do they're they very do they clever. look 3d they look phenomenal absolutely phenomenal um the next challenge yes in a new range is we're doing an ombre like a shaded ombre color change in the background for the japanese range mm. and that will use that'll use the airbrush so they'll lay down different screens they have different shades of teal and they'll soften off um where it changes color with the airbrush over the top that is very clever that is very Evidently. clever so the first range that you went out on your own with was that under the australian sun no no um under the australian sun's on its 11th year this year seen imprint for 11 years wow that's phenomenal so, so many textile artists they do a run and then you you don't see it again like that's it it's gone yeah but yours has a timeless element to it which is just beautiful well it's been yeah and look it's been lovely because because we it's australia so everyone always wants australian prints to make quilts to send overseas or for wedding presents or so it's always got a symbolic meaning here um 
I think it was kind of one of the first print collections that went out with Australian flowers. There's lots here now, but they're not, they're more modern and more contemporary in what they look like, which is great. Then Cool just got lots of different styles and designs to choose from. Um, no, we didn't, under the Australian Sun, we did four, four re-release or re rejigged collections of Under the Australian Sun with Kaufman and then we did the Culture Club which was Dutch, Indian and Russian and I'm about to start that up again and we're going to go into different cultures with that and revisit some of those. And this is so then we on your own you're gonna you're gonna revisit various places of the world and yeah. do a, an, a culturally inspired yeah. collection. I can't wait. Yeah so Dutch is all is all, of course, Delftware, China wear, of and course. things like that. Yeah. Um, and Indian is um sari designs and tassels and jewels. It's just really, really rich. lovely. Um really rich. That was that was really good. Japanese later this year, um, Tibetan, like just the colours and everything are just gorgeous. So the girls can literally go on a trip and learn about different cultures when we do the fabric ranges but Melba was my to answer your question Melba was the first one we did on our own now Melba was um what would happen if let me get this <laughs> right. uh Nellie Melba the opera singer and yes. William Morris spent yes. the night together what would yes. their fabric love child be yeah. like? In the House of Liberty, they spent the night in the House of Liberty. Oh, in the House of Liberty. Oh, okay. I didn't realise that we had a destination as well. I mean, it's all yeah. going on. <laughs> this is the love child. I just, so, I love that. Is that the brief? I mean, is, was... That was, the, that was my brief to myself. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, look, I had a... I had a lovely personal connection with the history of um, Dame Nellie Melba as a teenager because uh, I, I sort of grew up, my parents had a farm near where Dame Nellie Melba's um, Australian home was so here called Coombe Cottage. And um, her granddaughter, uh, Lady Vesti, befriended my my mum when I was about 16. Mum worked in a shop and we used to go to, to Dame Nellie Melba's home, just personally just us. and. Um, I had full reign to walk around the house while they were having a cup of tea. Now it's all very tourism and you have to queue and book tickets and everything to go. But you um, just wandered. I just wandered. So the colours, like the colours in the quilt behind you, they... Um, the, these ones or the, the grey? Yeah, they kind of represent Dame Nellie Melba's bedroom to, to an extent. That teal colour that I've used throughout is what the silk panels on her wardrobes were. Um, but but also it's it's indicative of the colours of that era, so about 1920. So that's why it's silver, not gold. And uh, those colours work. And then the other part of the story in the designs is her father was an amazing um, builder. So Dame Nellie Melba's father, Major Mitchell, built our Royal Exhibition Buildings in Melbourne. This is your wow. history lesson for the Dame. Yeah, no, no, it's um, fascinating. For um, in 1988, for Queen Victoria's, you know that huge world exhibition yes. that went round the world. Yeah. So a lot of the designs in that large panel print are taken from that building here in Melbourne. It's one of the only a couple that survived the wars and things. So um, a lot of those designs, if you when you come to Australia, I will take you and Adam to the um, <laughs> to the building. <laughs> so for those of you that don't know. Um, the first show that I did at the Crafts or Ho Chand or whatever you want to call it, um, <laughs> with your fabrics, Adam, who was the, the show's presenter for that hour, <laughs> by the end of the hour, we were planning a road trip around Australia. Really? We had people emailing in from Australia saying, come here, we'll show you this, we'll show you that. So it's all happening. Uh, and apparently Adam's coming too, which is great. So, <laughs> you know, nice to have come sure. on a road trip, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> it's all going on uh so we've got uh, yeah and then there's also the black colorway isn't there the black and the oranges yeah. and what well, i've got some of the oranges here i don't know if i've got here have you got some oh yeah like that so where did this yes. colorway come from yeah that colorway we called australis so that was more indicative of um 
real, you know, Outback Australian colours as well. And that comes on a black as well. And I had to put black in because um, Dame Nellie's bathroom is that, you know, that classic black and white tiles. And, um, yeah, and she had little touches of burnt orange and red through it. And it was just beautiful. I mean, the house was amazing, Natasha. When I went, you could go to her dressing table and her hair was still in the brush, like everything had been left. Wow. Wow. as it was when she was there it was just it was incredible there's a lot of other designs from that house I would like to do that aren't necessarily Australian there was peacock wallpapers from Italy and oh incredible so yeah just gorgeous but um but that yeah that was the one that we did our first one on our own is the textile pantry so So it is it's special they're like your babies you know well, when you put that much time and effort and love and thought and all of those things go into yours, it's not like you're just churning them out because because you've got a deadline. You know, these these happen yeah. because, you know, you have a love and you spend the time doing your background research. And, you know, I mean, even the fact that you spent two years learning to be able to draw in order to do this, I absolutely take my hat off to you. So after Melba, what came after that? Summer Palace. So Summer Palace, we're just starting to get snippets of, uh, she says, looking around. This is where you and I go, where's the Summer Palace? Where's the Summer Palace? I've got some. Oh, I've got some fans. (laughs) I've got this. I'm partway through my bag. I've got some of the fans. Oh, well done. That looks awesome. I've got to, I've just got to sew in the, so I've just started to baste in the handle and then I've just got to stitch that in there and I'm done so so probably I need to make an excuse in a way if why yeah. don't I churn out more designs and it's because it's just me and a couple of like I don't have a big company and your cat so I just do it myself so so it's just me and um I have a lovely little part-time team but we juggle designing and doing fabric in between you know a wholesale business running it all ourselves it's always quite small so when we do do a range I have to put a lot of thought in it because I can't I can't as you said I just can't have it come in and out for three months it doesn't yeah yeah, yeah. because I love to design all the quilts and everything that go with it you need it to have a longevity that it will that it will this, last a while this was a big part of my excitement was the fact that here was a designer that not only understood and knew a quilter's needs because you are a quilter so you understood what sizings what colors what contrast um that we needed but also you then put your money where your mouth was and then made the most incredible designs to show off your fabrics so when you're designing them like with the with these ones here and we've got the tile the tile print there and that is done to a really specific size. And I see that through all of your designs. It's like, all oh, right, that's why it's that design. Um, and then... Um, oh, yeah, because I, I used to get frustrated. People wouldn't leave you half an inch on a border section so that you could cut two quarter inch seams or, um, or you know, and, and back to Kaufman, who were fantastic. We don't want you to waste any design space so we've widened your four panels then and then they're now 11 and 5 eighths wide and I go I cannot if you give that to me when they get to my shop if I put that in front of a customer they're going to throw it back at me because the maths is too hard yeah so you have to allow you have to be so careful that you're giving people something that will work in a large a large design they can cut it up for a small design they can fussy cut from it it can go in a bag it can go in a quilt it can go in anything um but they you don't want them to have any waste no. they've got to you know they've got to be able to use it or see the benefit in using up what's left I suppose so and, and that's what I really see is that there is thought from the beginning conceptually all the way through to the finished designs that you create because you also you know you you have your own shows in Australia that you do and you teach and all those sorts Mm -hmm. of things so 
you you really do put your money where your mouth is like these are my fabrics and these are the designs and this is how we use them and and already I feel like I've I've almost got a mentor in you with because I'm learning so much through using your patterns um ah that's a really interesting way of doing things that's an and you, you know I hadn't thought of doing it that way so for me it's such a great education and as I've the, got you making yeah, bags, Natasha. You have well, a, a slightly obsessively. <laughs> I've even bought a new hat stand to hang them all on because I'm really <laughs> <in space. laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Hey, do you want to see a funny one? Yeah, go on. Sorry, I was just going to say also. Do you beautiful things like uh scarves and lens cloths and or now I'm wearing glasses I need lens cloths I've, I realized this in my life um so you also do those accessories that go with it which is just beautiful oh well you see that's the well that's that's kind of like the add-on um that's the add-on fun thing for us as well and and be, because they're Australian when we do under the Australian sun because they're Australian flowers or Melba they're a souvenir if I do gift wear. So we make those to, we sell them into botanical gift shops and, and things. But the quilters love them because they can they can make a bag and they can have their scarf to match or their pocket mirror or their lens cloth. When, when I, I think, was it the, either the first or second call I ever had with you, you're like, yeah, no. So I've got the scarf and then I've got the sarong. And I was like, hmm sarongs do we need that in this country but you're like no 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 no. look at all the things you can do with it have you is that is that one that you've got around your neck can you show us all the things that you showed me this one yeah well this, no this is an old hang on this is an old one of mine hang on, i'll get this there's another one here hang on because <laughs> they just breed here they just yeah. oh they're lovely oh i love the orange one the orange yeah i can't believe how popular the orange was I don't know why, because it's a pop. It's a pop of colour. It's beautiful. I mean, you can oh, wear see, and then see pop these big it. Waratahs on here. These yeah. big guys. All right. Just so you know, don't tell anyone. No, no, secret safe with me. <laughs> um, the these these come from this original fabric. Well, hang on. Why haven't we got that? Wait, just wait. You will. Have that was the original first big design and we're redoing that this year so you will have that well we have it how, how but it looks it looks so much I mean that's that's 11 years ago but it looks so cool now with the shading and the airbrushing and it's, it's wow. good all right it's, so I mean, I'm not going to stand up or you'll lose me but okay. all right so you've got to go round and yeah. under your arms okay it's not going to work is it hang on I can do it I can do it so you're going to go under your arms and then you go around and you twist up that way oh nice how's that see beautiful yes you just work like that yes they're big they're really big yeah but they'll still scrunch up really nice and small You've got these, haven't you? Yeah, I love them. I'm waiting for some. I'm waiting for some beautiful weather to, you know, sarong it up. Sarong it up. Well, I have got mine on today because we're in autumn now, and it's getting, it's getting chilly. Now I have to share with you Go on. my first ever handbag. Yes, yes, yes. It. Go on, show us. And then the irony is, I need to remake it in summer palace. Okay. I mean, you know, when you go for a handbag, you know, you don't just go for like a normal handbag, do you? What was I thinking? I have no idea. I love Look it. At it. It's 3D. Beautiful. And it's got a little flat. We we used to, these are just, these are beautiful to make for wedding parties and things too, because the girls just like having something sturdy to put their spare pantyhose and lippies and things in. No. Um, but I really want to redo this one because it's got all these techniques. It's got 3D flowers, little paper piece butterflies on the back. Beautiful. So I'm going to do this in Summer Palace Gorgeous. for us. 
gorgeous. You and me. He's so old. Poor baby. But I know, nothing simple. What was I thinking? I, in for a penny, in for a pound. I think, that's, I think that's what it is. And then the one that you've got in front of you. This is yours. Yeah, I love it. I've been sitting oh. here. So I'm just sewing your buckles on. Oh, thanks. And um, that's, going, that's going in a box to you tomorrow. If I can fit myself yeah. in, I will. But if not, I'll just fit the bag in. <laughs> And these are, this is it, you know, they are such versatile fabrics, whether you're a quilter, a bag maker, um, you've even got some beautiful, oh, the brunch jacket, I need to make the brunch jacket. They're, yeah, you and me both, I need to make another one. Oh, they're just beautiful, but then you can do cushions with it, they're just incredible, hang on, what, what, how have you got a basket with it on? My dear, dear friend, uh, Leanne Church, works for me, this was my Christmas present. So look at that. She this is called so I wanted to show I wanted to show everyone this because we've all got the old sewing basket. Yeah. In yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had mine as a so old she from like, she yeah. recovered an old one for me. Look at that. Beautiful. Just gorgeous. Oh. So I get to sit this on my desk. But um, I think we all need to get the old one. I've got an old one that's just not coming out. <laughs> that I don't know where it came from. I know. But see, I, you know, it's it's sort of it's Australian, but then I I appreciate not everyone knows they're Australian. So it's just nice sometimes if people just look at them as a floral. Um, but but yeah, and what you were saying, this this one. This little metallic tonal one that you've got uh, the little eucalyptus flowers, the flowering gum. Um, we can't call it flowering gum in America because they think of chewing gum and bubble gum. That's really funny. Really? So what do you have to call it? <laughs> eucalyptus, which is even more complicated. Is it? But see, I like them. I like the fact now they just get used as a metallic coordinate, not just necessarily because they're part of. The collection for sashing and for binding and I am um, I have a bit of a guilt complex with these because um okay. because I absolutely adore them but I use them for linings as well and then I feel bad yeah. like I'm like should I be using such a beautiful fabric to line yes and then but then you taught me a technique and it took the guilt away a bit where if you use, so I came away from using H640 and started using a, a heavier interfacing, which meant that then yeah. you get that pop and it looks bound where your seam allowance is. So now I'm like, yeah, we'll just do that then. That's that I love cork. that bag. It's my cork bottom base bag. Yeah, I've got a bit of cork envy. I'll send you some cork. We'll do fabric swapsies. <laughs> <laughs> But it's, you know, and, and I think actually the cork just works so well with your designs because it's bringing more nature in with nature. You yeah. can't go wrong, can you? It's just, it's just stunning. Yeah, so the what, else, textures. what else is to come? Right. <clears throat> I'm wondering if my family are listening because that'd be like the first time they hear. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if not, you know, Steve will find out on Tuesday, right? Yeah. <laughs> when it comes to dinner. That's so true. <laughs> right. Because of somebody in the UK, we have to print um, that kaleidoscope design in Melbourne behind you again. This one? Yes, but not to miss an opportunity. We're doing a new colourway, which is very... Um, Oh, I don't want to say, I'm not going to say William Morris. I'm not going to say Liberty. I'm, I don't know, almost Fortnum and Mason kind of um, inspired, Laura Ashley inspired in reds and slate blue and greens. So we'll do new colorways in that. So nice. that's happening. There's you like the pink and teal under the Australian sun, don't yep. you? Yep. Okay. So it needs to come back through in a border print. So that's coming through in a border print to go with that because then we can do lots, lots more with it. Um, and then we're going, we're, then I am going to do a Japanese collection. I have started it. And I've done the panel first 
Oh, really? So if you want to look up at any stage, Japanese mon symbols. So they're, they're the Japanese version of a family crest and they're beautiful circular designs with everything from sailing boats to flowers, all, all sorts of things. And I've taken nine floral ones and put them into a panel. So there's maple leaves and irises and cherry blossoms and whole heap, bamboo, whole heap of things. Then I've taken the flowers out. It's very detailed. I've taken the flowers out and you've got borders top and bottom of all of those. And we're going to be able to embellish all of the mon symbols with the flowers. So we're going to take them and do 3D work over the top of the panel. That sounds phenomenal. I love it. And so to... did you design... Did you have that project in mind and design the panel to that? Or did you think up this as you were designing the panel? Which way around does it go? Okay. I have a quilt called an Oriental Baltimore. That was the block of the month for many years. And it's literally taking that quilt, which is all needle turn applique with 3D in it. Um, I'll send you a photo and turning that into fabric. So, um, and it's all about the seasons. So one colorway is summer, autumn, another one is spring and winter. And um, then you get all of, then you have coordinates that have got all the leaves with the kanji symbols for the four seasons. And you get a full on floral and a border to go with it. So again, it's very much what you said, it's a project driven um, range. So I will know what the projects and the quilts and everything are before I finish the designs. This so, is the beauty of it because so often people buy fabric and, you know, I'm guilty of it. I've got a stash of fabric and I sit there and I go, I, I, I bought half a meter because that's, you know, it's what you buy, isn't it? And then sometimes it's too much for a project or not enough for a project or I don't actually have a full project in mind or I didn't actually buy the rest of the range. So I don't have any other stuff that coordinates. Then I have <laughs> yeah, And you get into that spiral. So my my promise to all of my Natasha Makes viewers when I bought your fabrics on board was that it wasn't going to be a case of you buy it and you're left with it. It was a case of you buy it and we will show you multiple things to do. And because this is the other beauty of it, because it's been in print now for 11 years, some of these, um, you know, it's not just going to run out and then you can't get any more. So, you, you know, I mean, it might take me a couple of weeks to get it shipped from Australia or we might have to wait for a reprint in Japan but it will be here. So yeah. when you're buying it, you're buying it knowing that it's not the end of it. And that actually, if you decide to do a large quilt in it, that actually it's okay because there will be more fabric coming through for you to then do some matching cushions or to reupholster a needle case or, you know, something, you know, there, there's going to be things that you can add on rather than just making that initial outlay and going, you know, maybe I want to do a quilt for a bedroom. Oh, okay. But there's nothing else out there like it. So suddenly this room is going to have to be eclectic or I have to put that quilt away and start again. Whereas now actually maybe you can, you can do a lampshade to match or all of these things. So you can either make a room of it in your home or as one lovely lady said, uh, Deborah, she's like, well, my house just looks like a boutique now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bit obsessed with Lisa's fabrics. I'm like, yeah, it gets you like that. But they also make gorgeous, gorgeous gifts so um that for me is is again a, an absolute joy of these is that you know you can for example this was the first first of your bags that were made mm -hmm. I couldn't I couldn't get your actual handle so the handle is slightly different there we've now managed to source the handles that you've got so it does it's a slightly different shape to yours but um I love this and it's gorgeous I like that one that with a pair of jeans, brown boots, you know, yeah. white, white little top, Aaron cardigan, I'm out, I'm done. Brown, brown belt, out the door. But feeling ridiculously elegant because of a bag. And yet in the same clothes that I did the school run in. You know, it's it's that kind of thing. 
Um, I, it's only recently, I have to confess, it's only recently that I've started using my own bags. What? I know. Why? Because... I don't know. It's I'm just self-conscious about um, wearing my own. I don't know if it felt like work or whatever, but just one day I walked past one in my studio and I just went, okay, that's it. That's mine. And now we use it. It's the same shape, as, same same pattern as the black fan one that you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I just now, I use it all the time. I don't know. It was maybe I was a bit self-conscious, but but I very embarrassingly stopped a lady in her tracks in a town last week. I was out with mum and we were in a coffee shop getting a coffee and this lady walked past with a bag and my mum didn't know what was going on because I did a run out the door and I just went, hey, hey, hey. She just looked at me, what, what, what? I said, nice bag. And she had, it was just a I've never seen one out before. There was just a bag made up of scraps of all of my fabrics. And she said, nice bag. And she went, oh, thank you. I, um, yeah, I had some leftover from a quilt that I made, you know, from, from some Australian designer. I bought a kit online somewhere. Where I said, it's a lovely bag. And I still didn't tell her. Who I was. Yeah, same. <laughs> no. I just didn't want to embarrass her. So I just went, <laughs> Oh, that's brilliant. Mum said you're unbelievable. So I just had to tell her it was a nice bag. I'm sure she meant that in the best of ways. Um, oh, gosh, what else? I had so many things I wanted to ask you. Oh, 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 so I'm going to quote you back at you. You told me that there are only six ways to make a bag. Yes. Six ways. <laughs> I don't have enough fingers. Six ways to make a bag. <laughs> oh, Lord. Have um, I got them all here? I don't know. But uh, we're, but we can have a go. Okay, so that is my challenge. And then you said, you know, so in my book, oh, wait, sorry, what? Where is this book? It's Why don't we book. have it? It's just a little, it's booklet. just a little booklet. Do you need the booklet? Yeah. Yeah. I'm happy to we can do this. Here. That's we, fine. We can get close between us. You ready? Okay. I'm looking around this room going, where am I going to get them from? Okay. Pinwheel base. Yeah. Do you make a little dilly bag that's got like a little pinwheel? We did your flower pot holder with that. Right. That's that's number one. Okay. Because that in a bigger version could have handles on it. Amazing. Or you could gather it up with a sleeve at the top and make a little drawstring bag. Gorgeous. Okay. Number one. Number two. Um, the one, this one. All in one base and sides. Right. So that is that give should you go that's all the way around. Okay. Okay. Which ones have you made? Now that that is the same as that one you're putting in a frame because <gasps> it goes all the way round. This this one just has a gusset. Now. That's just got a gusset. Oh no, that's got a gusset, a lie. That's that's a different one again. That's a curved base and sides. Hang on, I'm going to another one. What's this one? <laughs> <laughs> right. This one is. I've got this yeah, one. Yeah, that's a wraparound base and sides. Oh, yes. which I love. And incidentally, treated myself to uh the stripe nice. lining yep so that's also wrap around base and sides yeah um and i've tapered it the sides just go out and that one behind you your novel one behind you is the same on the wall yes 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 okay now do you like this one oh, for your purple look lovers look at all your flowers <laughs> on there Oh, <laughs> so which one's this we one? went a little bit silly but that's one as well um right so we need to do a curved base at some stage okay we'll get there oh oh we'll, we'll do one and you can you can do it on a monday all right okay i'm just trying to think because um 
Does that count as a curved base? No, that's a flat bag. Now, because it didn't have a separate base or anything. So that's, hey? It's still beautiful. It's still beautiful. But that's just called a flat bag because you don't have any separate side gusset or base. You put darts in to give it its 3D. Right, okay. Effect, yeah? Okay, yeah, yeah. So yeah. we're nearly up to five. That's, that's six because it's pre-shaped and then okay. it's whip stitched together. So it's a constructed bag. Right. But I've got more. So Ooh, what do you want to see six? a really cool one? Come yeah, on. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you're into my to-do list bag. <laughs> look at look at that. Isn't that cute? Ah, oh, yes. I love that. You the know dragons. That it's gonna have to be in made with insulated whatever so that I can have that as a lunchbox bag. See, it's in progress. The draft of the patterns inside, see? Nice. <laughs> nice. I love that. Look at those. I love that. Beautiful. That's a wraparound base inside. So have I got to five or six yet? I don't know. I must have. I don't know. They're not all here. Well, Probably. we'll just have to get the booklet and then and then we'll know. All right. Then we will know. Then uh, we will know. Lisa, thank How's you. your ruching going? My ruching. Oh, yes, good ruching. I'm going to be ruching in the week. That's how my week is panning out. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All these different techniques. And the other thing we need to do is some origami, some fabric origami. Oh, yes. We've got that on a quilt to do. There's so much. And um, so much there is a lot to do. But the other thing that you said to me is that, you know, your, your bag designs and things like that, they not only do they look obviously amazing in your own designs, but they also look great. And this was when you had me um, in cave. And I was like, oh, oh, yeah. Oh, the lady likes cave. We're going to get on. That's fine. I've got, I've actually got a pattern called Summer Palace, not the fabric range. And I designed it. Rob took me, we won't talk about how long ago, to Beijing for my 40th. Right. Um, and it's designed off all of the red uh, framework on the doors and the windows at the Summer Palace in Beijing. And um, so that's how long that range was in development, only a decade. Um, and it, so it's all different sort of vertical and horizontal panels. And it takes 21 UK fat quarters or metric fat quarters. And I just want to wrap up with love about 21 K fat quarters and just pop them in with a dark blue or a dark gray sashing. Cool, just, yeah. I, need, I need to go and shop on your website and just buy 21 fat quarters. You know, I've got a few kicking about. Just, just a few. Here and there. Just a few. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Lisa, thank you. I'm going to let you go because it's your evening and it's a Sunday and this will go out on a bank holiday in the UK. Um, so this will go out on May bank holiday. So, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm well, listen, different. thank you. Thank you for all your support and also to to all the wonderful quilters that have um, been so nice and bought my fabric so far from you. It's been a joy. It's been oh. lovely and very inspirational for me to keep going. Well, please do keep going because we need more. <laughs> We're not greedy. We just want more, please. <laughs> All right. Enjoy your evening and thank you so, so much. My pleasure. Thank okay. you. I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.